It's Thursday, May 26th. I'm David Song, currency analyst with Daily FX, and we're seeing the US dollar lose ground against its major counterparts as we continue to see some mixed data prints coming out of the economy. And at first glance, we did see US durable goods orders beat market expectations, with demand for large ticket items expanding 3.4% in April. Nevertheless, looking at the components, we did see non-defense capital goods orders excluding aircrafts, a proxy for future business investments, unexpectedly contract for the second sec second consecutive month, declining 0.8% from the previous month. So we'll see how Fed officials absorb the incoming data here, but nevertheless, looking at Fed funds futures, still pricing a less than 40% probability for a rate hike at the quarterly meeting in June. So we'll see if we get some fresh commentary, some meaningful commentary from Fed officials ahead of then. That may certainly influence the interest rate outlook. But tomorrow morning, we do have one more piece of data print to watch out of the US. The preliminary first quarter GDP reading where market market players are looking for a nice upward vision in the growth rate. So, of course, we'll see if that will instill an improved outlook for the U.S. economy. But even before then, we do have a key data print coming out of Japan. We do have the consumer price index at hand. And on that front, I'll be keeping a very close eye on the core core rate of inflation, which strips out volatile items such as food and energy costs. And current market expectations are looking for a steady read there for that figure to hold at an annualized 0.7%. So we'll see how that will fare for not only near-term price action, but also for the monetary policy outlook as on my end, still seeing a lot of bets that the Bank of Japan will take some further actions to support the economy to achieve their 2% rate of inflation as we continue to see some mixed data prints coming out of the Japanese economy as well. But looking at near-term price action, looks like we may be at a risk of a further decline in exchange rate. You know, we're doing a pretty good job of retaining the range-bound price action from early in the week, but nevertheless, we're really struggling to break out of this bearish formation that we have carried over from the end of March. So we'll see if the near-term, the longer-term bear formations will gain traction over the coming days. But looking at the RSI signature as well, we're still doing a fairly good job of preserving this long-term bear formation that we have carried over from June of last year. And even if you want to take the other side of the coin, looks like the nice bullish trend that we had, the upward trend that we had from earlier in the month, giving way. So we'll watch some of the downside risk. And even in the RSI here, I think we could make a similar case where we're largely failing to retain the short-term trends here, the rebound, if you will, as the bigger picture context comes, in, comes into play. So we'll see if we get a nice break of the near-term range here to open up some of the downside risk. But on that, if we do see a break to the downside, failure to retain the range bound price action from early, in the, from early in the month, may open up some of the downside targets on my end. First region of interest up coming in right around that 108.50 zone followed by 107.90, followed by the 107 handle. So we'll see if we could get a re, uh, resumption of the near-term, long-term downward trends that we have for the dollar yen. But just be aware, guys, we are going into a holiday weekend in the U.S., so we may face some thin market conditions as we look to wrap up the May trade. But on that, we're also seeing this lackluster attempt here by the U.S. dollar here to break out of this downward trending channel that we have carried over from early on the year, still large capped by the Fibonacci overlap right between that 11,950 into the 11,965 zone. So on the longer term context, maybe trying to carve out another lower high here. So we'll see if that will largely come into play. To have a little bit more conviction about that, I want to see some of the downside targets give away. First one coming in right around 11,898, followed by 11,936 to be exact into the 11,840 zone. So we'll keep that on the radar. But even, even if you're watching the RSI here, it looks like we're getting a nice turn in the oscillator, even though we've broken out of the bearish formation that we have carried over from early in the year. So I'll be more than happy to redraw some of these patterns here, may look at a new context, new sort of formation that may continue to take shape over the coming days. But we'll see how US GDP will fare, to, fare tomorrow, not only for near-term price action, but of course, also for the monetary policy outlook. And let's not forget, we also have some meaningful commentary that's coming out of the Group of Seven meeting in Japan. However, not sure if we're going to get any sort of meaningful coordinated action from the global community of central bankers, from the global community of finance ministers to, finance ministers to stem some of the risks around the global economy. So we'll see how that will all fare for also market sentiment. But with that out of the way, the best of luck on all your trades and have a great day.